Picture a crowded room filled with people, and suddenly someone drops a glass that shatters into a thousand pieces. Now imagine those shattered pieces becoming high-speed projectiles, ricocheting off other objects and creating a cascade of destruction that grows exponentially with each collision. This is precisely what happens in space when debris collides, creating a domino effect that could render space travel impossible. The threat of Kessler syndrome has become increasingly real in recent years, as we continue to launch more and more satellites and other space debris into orbit. Each launch adds to the already existing space debris, making the situation more precarious. It's no longer a question of if, but rather when we will reach a tipping point where the debris field will become too dense for safe and reliable space travel. As we ponder the impact of Kessler syndrome in our daily lives, we must ask ourselves some hard questions. What if satellite communications suddenly go down? How will we navigate without GPS? What about the impact on weather forecasting or national security? The answers to these questions are not easy, and the consequences of not addressing them could be dire. In this video, We'll take a closer look at Kessler syndrome, what causes it, and the impact it could have on our civilization. We'll explore the solutions being proposed and the role we can all play in ensuring a sustainable and safe space environment. So buckle up and get ready to dive into the fascinating and frightening world of Kessler syndrome. The Kessler Syndrome may sound like a modern-day phenomenon, but the concept actually dates back to the Cold War era of the 1970s. During this time, the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a space race, each trying to outdo the other with technological advancements and achievements. But with each successful launch came the potential for space debris, as rockets and satellites remained in orbit around the Earth, creating a growing population of man-made objects in space. To keep track of these objects, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, called NORAD, began cataloging and monitoring them in what would become known as the NORAD Space Surveillance Catalog. This database allowed scientists to track and predict the movements of space debris, and it soon became apparent that collisions were a growing concern. It was in this context that Donald Kessler, a NASA scientist, proposed the theory that would become known as the Kessler Syndrome. In a paper published in the journal Science in 1978, Kessler suggested that collisions between space debris could create a cascade effect, generating more debris and leading to even more collisions. In turn, this could create a runaway effect that would ultimately make space travel impossible. The basic idea behind the Kessler Syndrome is simple. As more objects are added to orbit around the Earth, the probability of collisions increases. Each collision creates more debris, and this debris then goes on to collide with other objects, creating even more debris in turn. As this process continues, the amount of debris in space grows exponentially, eventually reaching a point where the density of debris is so high that even the smallest piece of debris could cause catastrophic damage to a spacecraft. While Kessler's original theory was groundbreaking, it was also theoretical, based on mathematical models and computer simulations rather than concrete observations. It wasn't until the 1990s that researchers began to confirm the existence of the Kessler syndrome through observations of the debris field in Earth's orbit. However, the issue with creating additional space debris from randomized anti-satellite contingencies would take shape in the decade prior, leading to the scary realization that would strike fear in researchers over the next 10 years. Anti-satellite missiles, also called ASATs, have been tested and utilized by various governments 
since the 1980s. These missiles are designed to destroy or disable satellites in orbit. While they have been used for a variety of reasons, including military and scientific purposes, their use has also raised concerns about the Kessler effect, a phenomenon where the density of debris in orbit can reach a critical point and cause a cascading collisional cascade, which can result in significant consequences for space operations and infrastructure. One of the earliest known ASAT tests was conducted by the Soviet Union in 1968. Since then, other countries have developed and tested their own ASATs. In the 1980s, the United States and the Soviet Union conducted a series of ASAT tests, with the US testing their ASM-135 missile in 1985, and the Soviet Union testing their IS system in 1987. Both tests were successful in destroying their targets, but also generated a significant amount of debris. China, India, and Russia have also conducted ASAT tests in recent years. In 2007, China conducted an ASAT test by launching a missile from the ground to destroy one of its own weather satellites, generating thousands of pieces of debris. This test was widely criticized, and the debris it generated has the potential to threaten other satellites in orbit. India also conducted an ASAT test in 2019 destroying one of its own satellites in low Earth orbit. This test generated debris, but at a lower altitude than China's test, reducing the risk of long-term effects on the debris field. In 2020, Russia conducted a test of its Nudal ASAT missile, but it is unclear whether the test was successful or not. The destruction of a satellite in orbit by an ASAT missile can generate a significant amount of debris, which can pose a threat to other satellites and space infrastructure. Debris from ASAT tests can remain in orbit for years or even decades, increasing the risk of collisions and further debris generation. In addition, ASAT tests can generate debris at different altitudes, which can affect the debris field in different ways. For example, the 2007 Chinese ASAT test generated debris at an altitude of approximately 865 kilometers which is close to the altitude of many communication and weather satellites. This has led to concerns about the potential impact on these satellites, as well as the risk of debris hitting the International Space Station. In contrast, India's 2019 ASAT test generated debris at an altitude of approximately 300 kilometers, which is much lower than the altitude of many operational satellites. While this test still generated debris, the lower altitude reduced the risk of long-term consequences for the debris field. In addition to the immediate effects of ASAT tests, the long-term consequences can also be significant. Debris generated by ASAT tests can remain in orbit for years or even decades, increasing the risk of collisions and further debris generation. Space debris, also known as space junk, refers to man-made objects in orbit around the Earth that no longer serve a useful purpose. This debris can include spent rocket stages, defunct satellites, and even small pieces of debris that have broken off from larger objects. The accumulation of space debris has become a growing concern, as it poses a significant risk to spacecraft and astronauts in orbit, and can contribute to the creation of the Kessler Syndrome. Currently, there are over 5,500 satellites in orbit around the Earth, with around 3,000 of them being operational. This is a significant increase from just a few decades ago, when there were only a few hundred satellites in orbit. In fact, since the launch of Sputnik in 1957, over 10,000 satellites have been launched into space. While many of these satellites remain in orbit for years, if not decades, eventually they will reach the end of their useful life and become space debris. As of 2021, it is estimated there are over 34,000 pieces of space debris larger than 10 centimeters in size, and millions upon millions of smaller pieces that cannot be tracked. The risk posed by space debris was highlighted in 2009, when two communication satellites collided in orbit, 
creating thousands of new pieces of debris. This was the first known collision between two intact satellites, and it demonstrated the potential for the Kessler syndrome to become a reality. This came two entire decades after the first major satellite catastrophe. In 1991, the first major collision between a satellite and space junk occurred when the Soviet Union's Cosmos 1934 spacecraft collided with debris from a spent rocket. This event created hundreds of new pieces of debris, further increasing the risk of future collisions. Since then, there have been several other collisions between satellites and other pieces of debris, including in 2019, when a European Space Agency satellite had to make an evasive maneuver to avoid a collision with a SpaceX satellite. The danger posed by space debris is not limited to spacecraft in orbit. When debris falls back to Earth, it can pose a risk to people and property on the ground. In 1979, the American space station Skylab fell out of orbit and scattered debris across Western Australia. While no one was injured, it caused significant damage to property and highlighted the need for careful monitoring of space debris. All this taken into consideration, if Kessler syndrome were to occur as a result of space debris, it could have catastrophic consequences. The debris created by collisions will be traveling at incredible speeds, posting a significant threat to active satellites, the International Space Station, and future space missions. A single collision could create thousands of new pieces of debris, each capable of damaging or destroying other objects in their path. The debris would continue to collide with each other, creating more and more fragments until the entire region becomes a dense field of shrapnel that would render space travel impossible. This catastrophic scenario could have severe consequences for our modern society, as many of our daily activities rely on satellites for communication, navigation, weather forecasting, and more. The loss of these capabilities could have a significant impact on global infrastructure and communication networks, potentially leading to widespread disruption of transportation, financial systems, and emergency services. Furthermore, the sheer amount of debris generated by Kessler syndrome could remain in orbit for centuries, continuing to threaten future space missions and causing ongoing harm to active satellites. It is possible that the debris could fall back to Earth, creating a hazard for the safety of people and property on the ground. While the likelihood of Kessler syndrome occurring remains relatively low, the possibility of such a catastrophic event underscores the importance of proactive measures to mitigate the risk of space debris. These measures include designing satellites and spacecraft to be more resilient to impacts, actively removing defunct satellites from orbit and promoting international cooperation to reduce the amount of debris generated by space activities. The good news is, efforts are being made to reduce the amount of space debris in orbit, such as designing satellites to be less likely to create debris in the event of a collision, and removing defunct satellites from orbit. However, with the increasing number of satellites being launched into space, it remains a pressing concern, both presently and beyond.